Hello, my name's Tyler. I'll be your host today. Uh, we're going to be making a silicone mold, so let's get started. I'll go over some stuff, and then uh, we'll kind of make it, and then we'll show you how to use it and everything else like that. So, okay, let's get started. <laughs> okay, this is a rectangular silicone mold. Uh, the benefits of silicone molds are that they don't leak compared to like melamine and some of the other products, like even like tape. Uh, they have a higher heat rating and they are reusable which is a big 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 benefit and it also has some time saving to it uh some of the cons though is that you're stuck in making the same shape over and over so uh you could put fillers in there like hdp blocks stuff like that you know make it a different shape whatever you're casting but as big as what it is is kind of what you're stuck at so uh what else do we got to go over on it do, 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 do. Oh, they can have like a smooth bottom finish too. Like you see the gals cast the roses and the flowers and all that other stuff. They can be used for that too. They can also be used to like, you know, catch intricate details if you're making like, you know, figurine or something like that. Like you see some of the people do the skulls and the dominoes and stuff like that. Uh, they can be used for that too. But in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to make a 24 by 12 by 2 inch one. For making the river charcuterie boards and then also i've got some over here that i use for cribbage boards also so uh let's get into the build um we'll go over everything and then i'll come back in and there'll be like four chapters of this and i'll kind of show you everything that goes on uh we'll stop in between each chapter and we'll kind of make sure everybody understands everything so okay let's get going <laughs> So this chapter starts by uh, breaking down the sheet goods. So here I am, I got the saw horses set up, a couple two by fours in between them. And this is a half inch sheet of melamine from Menards. So uh, the stuff from Menards, like watch out for it. The edges of it are kind of chipped and everything like that. Uh, the only reason I didn't go to Home Depot is because it's all the way across town and the Lowe's over in Altoona also, they didn't have half inch, but Menards had half inch melamine. So. That's what I use. Uh, just use the track saw to break it down. Okay, so here I am cutting it up into four different sections because we want it two inches tall. So these ones I'm getting right here, I'm just getting them close to 24 by 12. So one, two, three, four, 24 by 12, okay? Then these are gonna be the sides right here, the rails of it, uh, 25 by three, and then there was a mistake there. They're supposed to be 14 by three. I'll show you that later on. But right here, I'm just breaking the uh, sheet down and then getting them into, you know, a close enough shape to 24 by 12. And they're a little bit bigger right now uh, because a sheet of metal means not, you know, 48 inches, it's 49. So kind of splitting the difference on it and everything like that. Uh, right here, I just get them close. I'm getting a box kind of made up, you know, the just a 2 inch by 24 by 12 box, you know, um, solid chunk of wood is what I mean. So clamping them down, getting everything as close as I can. And then what I do is I use some screws to hold it all together. Uh, I pre-drill first. The screws that I use are an inch and three quarter subfloor screws. Uh, that's what I can find in Menard, so that's what I use. Don't know if it's right, don't know if it's wrong, but worked for me, so that's what I used. Uh, but anyways, uh, I pre-drilled the screw holes and everything like that. I just found a drill bit that was a little bit smaller. Uh, with melamine, I've always found that if you pre-drill a little bit, it works better. Uh, and then I had the clamps and everything holding it together just because like I wanted it to stay in one place. So that's why I did that. But uh, right there, like on the edge and stuff like that, don't go super close to the edge, but kind of close because we're going to bring it back over here to the table saw and trim it to its final dimensions. So I left this a little bit bigger than 24 by 12. It's actually 12 and an eighth by 24 and three eighths. So there you go. It's a little bit bigger. Okay. So right here, I'm making the sides. Now on the sides, I made these three inches wide, so I had some room. Uh, and then when I made my box, when I'm making my box, because that's all you're doing right here is just making a box to go around it. I messed up. I should have made that one on the end 14 inches long. I forgot to add for the half inch on each one. So make sure you're not like me and you don't mess up. Uh, if you're gonna make your, you know it, 13 inches wide you need to go 14 inches long you got to add the extra inch to it so everybody makes mistakes but we get through it okay so there you go you see the box there it is and then i'm putting pieces of half inch in between it to act as shims all 
Okay, so this will be chapter two. <laughs> okay, so the block that we made outside, the 24 uh, and 3 eighths by, tw by 12 and an eighth, this is the block all screwed together. This is the top side of the block with no screw holes in it, okay? Um, what you're gonna see in the next part of the video is I tape over all this melamine right here and then we screw it down to this other sheet of wood, okay? Now the reason we tape over the melamine right here is because it's very, very porous and we don't really want it to stick to the silicone and everything. So uh, this is the top side. This is the side you'll be, me, be seeing me pour on. Then also we build the square framework around it. Um, it's gonna be like that. And what you wanna do is you wanna try to leave a half inch gap. So I pretty much demolished uh, my other frame when I took it apart. Uh, so I'm just kind of using this as an example to show you. So you're going to want to have a block all the way up against uh, the square that we made, you know, the rectangular block that we made. Put it in between it, shim it out, and then when you build your framework, you're going to be like, you know, half inch away from it right there. So this is where the silicone is going to go. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Okay, let me flip it over and kind of show you the bottom of it so you can kind of see where we screw it down at. Okay, so this is the bottom of it where we screw it down at. Uh, just use some common sense, you know, like I majored it, got it pretty square, and then drilled and made sure I wasn't close to the side so it didn't like, you know, break the sides out and stuff like that, but uh, didn't really major and really do that. I just kind of shot them down, hope for the best. You know, I wouldn't even know if I'd hit the other screw heads, but uh, you know, that's kind of how I did it, just being honest. But yeah, just make sure when you're screwing it down, like where the, edge is going to be out you don't get close to that because you could split it out potentially okay let's get going on uh making making the rest of it <laughs> okay so here's all the parts and pieces to it that is the block that we made outside uh there's just a base of wood right there it's just a chunk that i trimmed you know to kind of make it easier to manage uh, i am taping around the edges so if you're good at wrapping presents you're probably better at taping the edges than I would be. So, but yeah, just take your time. Uh, that's pretty important right there. You don't want any of it hanging off. You wanna block all the porousness of the melamine. Uh, right here, I'm just kind of measuring it up, squaring it up so it's pretty centered in there. And then I bring the drill in and I pre-drill some holes. And then I just, the, the screws I used to run it down too were just um, drywall screws. Nothing that was gonna go through the top. I think they're about an inch. So nothing fancy. Okay, uh, right here, I am just cleaning the sides again, getting them all ready, uh, making the box around it. And then I have these clamp things right here. Man, these things, I tell you what, I'll link them in the description of the video, but they are one of my favorite things to use to kind of keep stuff square. So use those right there. I'm putting the half inch shims around the block. And the reason we do that is that's because that's where our silicone is going to go out and we want a uniform half inch all the way around it. Uh, I just hot glue stuff down. That's kind of how I do it. Um, I put the hot glue on the edges like that, and then I kind of melt it in, and then I come about a quarter inch up on the lower melamine right there, and then I kind of like let it just kind of drip down. So that's what I do. That's how I seal stuff up. Um, it's worked great for me. So just kind of let you know that. Never been a fan of the silicone, so I've always just used hot glue. I like it better. Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop this and we'll get into the uh, part about the silicone. Okay, so there's kind of like a rough shape, like kind of how I'm drawing it out and everything. I'm not the best at drawing stuff. Uh, you guys know that because you saw my abstract art videos from before. But I kind of typed it all out. So if you're going 25 inches long by 13 inches wide, because you're gonna have the half inch gap on each side uh, to kind of get you where the silicone's gonna go at, because the silicone's gotta go in the half inch gap, uh, you need to do some measurements. So you need to convert it to cubic inches, um, then to ounces, okay? So the base is about 90 ounces of silicone, um, and then the side is gonna be about 42.1 ounces for the sides, okay? So that came out to 132-ish, so I figured, you know, 128 ounces would be good. Now, with what I just kinda told you on this, 
This is only 4.4 pounds of silicone. I don't know why they don't give you the measurements in ounces, uh, but it was only 60 ounces for each for each little two containers like this combined. So I had to use four containers total, you know, two of each. Uh, so that only came to 120 ounces, which means the bottom of that is a little bit thinner than a half inch, which it's been working just fine. But, you know, there you go. So uh, if anybody wants this, I'll try to like, you know, put it up on the website or something like that. But there's my forms and, you know, figuring and stuff like that. Uh, we are going to do another video on a different silicone mold. But I just figured I'd show you this so you guys can kind of make sense of it too. If you want to like, you know, screenshot it or pause it or something like that. See how the formula, you can go ahead and do that. So, okay, let's continue on. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, we're taking the clamps off of the form and I'm getting the silicone ready. And right here is like where I realized, well, shit, that's only going to be, you know, 60 ounces on each one. I'm like, oh, God, dang it. But anyways, when you mix this, uh, treat it just like epoxy. You know, scrape your sides, mix for five minutes, uh, and then pour it down in there and everything. So treat it just like epoxy. And you can see me doing it right there on the other form also for the cribbage boards, uh, just leveling it out. So same thing, you know, make sure everything's level. Uh, kind of go off of that and then here I am you know showing you again just kind of a close-up so you guys can see the silicone mixed uh, like I said make sure you mix for like five minutes uh, instructions only say three but go five you'll be fine there's a measurement of it and then when you mix it you know same thing like what I'm saying you know just go in there mix 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 and then scrape your sides and everything like that um, you don't want to have a you know, sticky silicone or unmixed silicone. So make sure you do this step properly and get everything all mixed up. So uh, dumping in the first batch right there. And then I think I got the second batch coming up too. But yeah, so do that. And then I mixed up the second batch, dumped it right on top of it, probably within, you know, five minutes of it. And there we go. So, uh, and then I give this about, I gave it a whole half a day to cure. So at least eight hours or so, but then I pulled it out. Um, I looked weird looking in on that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, give it, you know, about eight hours to cure. You'll see me pour this other one here, and then we'll take the forms apart. So uh, I did end up getting some leaks and stuff like that on this one. So I keep the hot, glu the hot glue gun ready, and then I just kind of glue over, like if it starts seeping. Uh, the stuff's pretty thick, so you don't have to worry about it running out. Now, taking the hot glue off, if you spray it a little bit with rubbing alcohol, it helps kind of break it down. So there you can see I'm just kind of pulling all the hot glue off of it right there. Um, and then I just use my hand and a chisel and a hammer kind of break the sides off. So this one that I'm working on right now, uh, this is for my cribbage board molds that I made. Um, just taking the sides off like that. And that one broke, you know, not very robust. And then when you get underneath of it, just be careful. You can take a razor blade and the chisel and just kind of peel it back. So that one's off right there. And I go and I get the hammer. I come back in and uh, I uh, take the sides off of this one and everything too. So pull the hot glue off, take the sides off and, you know, pull it out of the form. So I know it's kind of redundant, but I, I went and I watched all the silicone mold videos and I didn't really see anybody go through all the steps so i figure i would you know very patiently go through all this stuff with you guys uh when i started woodworking and stuff there was a lot of stuff that i didn't understand so i figured if i took my time and kind of went very went through it very very thoroughly uh, hopefully more people would understand it so there you go okay took my sides off broke them <laughs> peeled this thing up here we go getting the chisel underneath of it and just get that little air bubble and then you know, flip it up, pull it up, and bam, got her. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, guys, uh, we'll continue on on the video uh, and finish some of the stuff up. I'll show you some pours and go over some other stuff with you. Uh, but I just wanted to take this time and say, like, if there's something I've taught you and you've learned from it, uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to. I've got a lot of stuff to go over. I just don't know where to start you guys at. And plus, like, 
I honestly don't know like what YouTube's gonna let me show on some of this fractal stuff that I do. Uh, I do also still have things for sale on my website. I've got my pigments. I'm also gonna be coming out with my own line of pigments here soon, as soon as the guy can get the labels done. Uh, and then I still have the shapes that I ship out also. Uh, www.resincolors.com is where you'll find that stuff at. Uh, so anyways, let's uh, keep going on this video. Uh, we'll conclude it. I'll do some pours and stuff like that and then bring you in at the end and kind of show you some results. Uh, one other thing I do want to say is that, you know, silicone is not the only way that you have to do these things. Uh, it does help out. It does prevent a lot of leaks. Um, I've used melamine in the past. I like this material a lot. It's affordable. Um, it's very robust. You can trim it. You can make it to size. Uh, some other things that I've used in the past are HDPE. Um, you can use HDPE to make forms out of and stuff too. This stuff is reusable also, uh, but it's priced pretty high for, for some like, you know, half inch sheets and three quarter sheets and stuff like that. So, uh, but as far as today goes in the video, you know, with the silicone and stuff like that, I hope you learned something from it. So, okay, uh, let's keep going. <laughs> Okay, so let's do some pours here. All right, so mold release is a big thing that you wanna use with silicone molds. Uh, you saw me in the very, very beginning of that spray some man 300 mold release. It's that black and uh, yellow can. Okay, so right here I am using a one-to-one -one resin. Uh, it's a Chinese brand, I think uh, Teaksbird or somebody like that, but I like this stuff. It seems to work okay. Um, shore hardness on it, it only gets up to 78. I think they advertise it like 82 or something like that, but a little bit softer of a resin, but for cribbage boards and some of the charcuterie boards and stuff like that, I think it'll be just fine. Uh, so I mix this stuff up, uh, got a couple of the cribbage boards going right there. On there, I just have some paint cans with weights holding the wood down so it doesn't float because wood will float in resin. Trust me, I've had it happen to me. <laughs> uh, but anyways, here's the maple one right there. Um, that is uh, some of the gelato. And then I've got a nether color that I'll probably be bringing on that I mixed in with it that kind of creates some effects and stuff like that. Can't really tell you about that yet, but uh, just uh, showing you that right there. Okay, so this is uh, breaking them out of the silicone molds. So the weights right there, um, I got those weights at Target. Um, that one popped out pretty good. The other one popped out pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so this is, you know, just a little zoom up of it. I'll go over some stuff here in a minute of it and show you some of the more of it. Um, this is a green one that I did. Now this was done with super clear, which is a deep pour. Um, with the one-to-one, -one, I did have some problems with some bubbles on the bottom. Uh, with the super clear, I have not had very many problems with bubbles on the bottom. Let's take a look at them and we'll take a look at the form and I'll show you everything. Okay, hold on. Okay, guys, so in my notebook, I got some more stuff saved. But uh, anyways, I just want to show you this on the bottom of them. Uh, I talked to Paul from Paul's Paint up there in Minnesota. He makes cribbage boards too. But uh, these do get, like if you look, you can see some very very small bubbles in them uh i left this a little you know low so when i go and plane it down it'll all match up but there is just some tiny tiny bubbles and this one right here this was poured with a one-to-one -one. so uh this one right here oh shit uh this one right here that's going to be a cribbage board uh this is poured with a deep pour and it's pretty solid, not not any bubbles really. I guess there's a few right there. Um, and then, you know, on top, so that's from the weights and stuff like that. But this one's gonna come out pretty. Uh, that's just kind of from my air of not popping bubbles. Uh, this is a green one right here. So on the bottom of it, not a whole lot of bubbles or anything like that. Uh, let's flip it over and look at the top side. So top side still needs playing down. And I'm a bigger fan of, uh, you know, over pouring because resin shrinks. I know you can't see it in the video, but if you could feel right here, there's a little lip where the resin's even shrunk down. So this is with a deep pour that fixed the bubbles. Uh, what else do we got? We got one more underneath. Oh, this was with the one-to-one. -one. 
I don't know if you can see the bubbles. Uh, let me let me set this one down. Hold on. Yeah, you can see them right there. So got some bubbles in it. I got to plane this one down still. So that's the bottom side. Uh, here is the top side. That one's real pretty. So, but yeah, um, deep pour is the way to go. While I was waiting, I just went ahead and prepped that one. I got to get a photo probably for the thumbnail, but. Uh, that man stuff right there uh, That's some old release spray that I spray and then like weights You just need something to kind of you know weigh it down more weight than this but Like um, eight pound weights is what I've been using so Okay, I'll come back on camera <laughs> Hold on Okay guys, let's wrap this one up uh, So make sure like use some eight pound weights like this to hold them down before you put your wood in, make sure you spray it with some mold release. I like this Man 200 stuff. It's worked good for me. Uh, as far as the resin, or not the resins, but the silicones go, I will link all the silicones that I use in the description of the video. So it'll be down in the link so you guys know what I used. And then also this stuff that I haven't used yet, uh, Nick Pro. It's the same brand as this, just translucent. Uh, one other thing I did want to tell you, like these forms like this when you make them, as long as you're careful taking them apart, you can make the sides again. So if you want to make, you know, two of them, like how I have two of these over here, um, I could make another, you know, 24 by 12 if I wanted to. I just want to say that's kind of an added benefit if you make your own molds. Uh, you can make multiple of them as long as you're safe and you take your time, you know, peeling the melamine back and taking the glue off, stuff like that. So uh, what else? What else do we got to go over? Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, next couple of videos, we'll go over some finishes and stuff like that. I like Odie's a lot. I've used Rubio. Rubio is not too bad. Uh, I got some stuff from the place over in Nebraska. Uh, I can't think of the name of them right now. Uh, I've got some Osmo. I got a couple other things, but we'll go over some finishes, stuff like that. Um, yeah, we got a lot to do. So, okay. If you guys like what I said, remember, uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. All right. Take it easy. Happy... Uh, I can't call it resin art. Let's call it a happy woodworking. So, all right. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.